Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 27 in our series, Getting Started with Rails 7. So this is probably going to be the last development episode of this series. We went through the Rails guide and then we had a few more kind of bonus type episodes where we went into some functionality that's not in the Get Starting, Getting Started guide, but is something that you would want to use while you're uh, developing a Rails application. So there, there's one more thing I'm going to create an episode on this um, this episode, and, and it's going to be related to stimulus. So part of the default Rails implementation, if you create a new application, is that you'll have hotwire Rails as part of your, uh, your gem file here. So um, Hotwire is essentially a combination of um, uh, the, their separate things. So um, Turbo Rails, which we've done some in, and touched on some in our previous episodes, uh, particularly as it relates to uh, getting confirmations to work with Rails 7 that are a little bit different than Rails 6 and earlier because uh, Rails unobtrusive JavaScript is not a default dependency in Rails 7 if you create a new application. So the other part of this is stimulus, which uh, we'll get into. So I've got it up here. So this is a, a really good uh, resource for stimulus. So this is um, self-described modest JavaScript framework for the HTML you already have. So Rails if you stick with convention over configuration and use your uh, your Rails application and develop it kind of in the, the idiomatic Rails way, you're going to be sending HTML from the server to the client and Stimulus um, is particularly adept at taking your, your data attributes from your HTML elements, allowing you to re react to events on them and change your HTML in, in a way that is kind of incrementally uh, builds on what you already get with Rails and then what you add in with, uh, with turbo streams and um, turbo frames and all those other things. So this uh, stimulus allows you to do a little bit more interactive client side work without doing something like React will as a front end framework where it essentially takes over your DOM and um, becomes the uh, the driver Sp stimulus kind of you, you create small functionality related controllers and um, it tends to be lightweight and work well with the rails way so we're gonna uh, just get into some of that before we do there is a dependabot alert on this repo so we're going to take a look at that and um, make sure that we're up to date and secure here. So uh, we're gonna update both Rails and Puma in our gem file and gem file dot lock here. So actually we don't need to update it other than yeah I think we can just run a bundle update uh, and we're already taking the latest version so we'll do that we'll take a look at the various things that got updated one of them was the import maps and stimulus so um, it's a patch update. I don't expect any of this to be breaking changes. But now we'll start getting started with stimulus in our application. So we're going to use the, I'm going to fire up the server here. We're going to use the, the welcome index page that we created a few episodes ago here as our place to put a stimulus controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
uh, go into that welcome index.html.erb and we're going to, uh, I'll pause and um, add in some code and then we'll talk about uh, what we're gonna do with it. So right now we've got just a div here. It's going to be containing an H5, um, a, um, a paragraph that will have a quote and then a button called get next quote, a button called reset. All of this right now is static. So we're just sending it over from our, uh, our view to the browser. So we click on this button, it doesn't do anything. We click on this button, it doesn't do anything. The, um, the quote is static here and the content of the H5 here is static. So what we're going to do is we're going to, if we go into our app, JavaScript controllers here, so you can see we've got a hello controller. So this is where, um, let's see, the um, by default where the So this is our, the hello controller, which comes by default. Typically you would, if you're developing a real app here, you would delete this out and uh, create controllers that are based on the types of functionality that you wanted. So let's say you wanted a CSS toggle controller, something like that, um, a CSS flip controller where you insert the kind of true false sorts of things. Uh, Stimulus works really well with CSS frameworks that are class-based like say Tailwind where you can um, trigger an action off of an event, uh, add remove CSS classes and get um, changes to how your the look and feel of your application. You can also do more um, data-driven things. You can make a a fetch call based on something here. You can um, do uh, integration with Action Cable. Uh, what we're going to do before we make any changes to this or include it in anything, we're going to we've been following a test-driven approach here uh, as we've been going through the getting started uh, with Rails Guide and some of the other things. So, in because this is going to be client-side functionality the tests here are going to have to be in the application system test case um, kind of system tests that use the um, selenium and the the browser driven stuff so we're going to create a new file here we'll call it welcome test.rb i'll pause and populate this with some stuff so right now I've got a, uh, I created a welcome test inheriting from application system test case, similar to how our articles test did. And then we've got one test, uh, stimulus interaction works. Uh, right now this is gonna fail because I'm, I'm gonna wind up changing the, uh, the content here, but we'll, um, test here, make sure it's working otherwise. So we've got a um, a failure related to the, um, the change here. So we're not going to start off with a quote here. We're going to start off with um, stimulus example in this index. And we'll make our paragraph initial text equal to the instructions. So now our test case should work, and it does. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to um, to 
add interactivity. So when we click on this get next quote button, it should let's it should give us a quote, which it is not yet now doing. So we'll write the, the failing test for this, or we'll add to our existing test here. We're gonna this is essentially all going to be one test with uh, with a bunch of actions and assertions in it on the welcome index URL. So pause and add in the next thing that we anticipate here. I've got in our next failure here, so I'm going to click on get next quote, and um, I should expect the text to uh, to now have um, Mrs. Peacock was a man slap from the clue. So we'll uh, and then we'll assert not text here because it should be replacing our text. Is it not? I think it's no text in. Yeah, no text. So this is going to fail because we don't have any interaction done here. We should it should identify the click and then say that it's failing on the uh, yeah so expected to find text Mrs. Peacock was a man and we're not getting it so let's start populating out this uh, stimulus controller here so we're going to um, in the index here we're going to in the parent div that contains all of these elements we're going to do data dash controller equals hello and we'll see what happens here remember we haven't modified the hello controller yet so um, when we refresh our page this should actually all go away we would anticipate and be replaced with uh, the hello controller default behavior so that's what we see is hello world we go into the hello controller now so right now we've got a one uh, method it's called connect and um, it takes this dot element dot text content and makes it hello world so that's getting rid of all of the uh, replacing all of the HTML, inner HTML of that div. So all of our um, H5 paragraph button, all that stuff winds up being gone. If we go and change this to comment it out, we're going to get our content back here. But right now it's not yet doing anything. So Let's see what we can do to um, to get some interaction here. We're going to um, start by making this this paragraph here a a target of uh, stimulus. So we've got our um, Oh, you know what? I do want to. So we're going to make this the. Let me go back and refail my test here. So this is going to be. That value get next quote here, but the paragraph underneath is going to be. Um, think about this yeah there'll be two paragraphs here so I'm going to also want some information about the uh, the number of quotes remaining so I'm going to keep the heading and then we'll have the quote and then the the number of quotes remaining here all right 
Let me take a look and see if this gives me what I want. I'm going to create more than one target just so that we're able to um, to specify here. So that should be fine. We'll go back into our welcome test here. Um, so this That's going to be gone. Stimulus example is going to still be here. And then we want text about how many quotes are remaining. All right, so this is the new situation. So we'd ex expect the text in our number of quotes to go down after the click happens. And then um, we should no longer see the um, the get next quote behavior. So we'll go back, rerun our test, which should fail. But it's failing at the same place that we had before. So as we were saying before I organized my thoughts here, so there are going to be uh, some targets here that we're going to define. So the way that um, Stimulus works here. Uh, we're going to declare a static variable with our targets here. So equals, we'll start with content and remaining. I'm also going to add targets for for our two buttons so that they can be disabled or enabled depending on how many quotes we have left. So I'll add those in as well. next button and a reset button. I'm going to uh, start off with the uh, make add an assertion that the the reset button will be disabled when we start. So I'm going to attempt to do uh, assert button reset disabled true. See if that gets me what I want. So it's looking for a button reset that's disabled, but there is no. So we'll we'll um, we'll make this start off as disabled in the for, at least for right now. Make that pass again. So it, that spec passed there. We're going to wind up taking this out pretty quickly, but um, we'll, we'll now go in and for each of these four uh, targets that we've defined, we're going to use uh, the syntax here, uh, data and the name of our controller. If it were uh, multiple words, we would use um, hyphen uh, case here. So if it were like, Hello World controller. Like that. And then equals. Um, so it's only hello. And this is our content. Let's, just to show that this is being done via stimulus, let's 
take this out of the paragraph itself, throw it into our hello controller. We'll create a const here. We'll actually put it in quotes. So right now, uh, we go and refresh this. It's going to just have, uh, let me make sure I saved both of these. I did not save my index. So right now, this element's going to be blank. You can see it's uh, not there anymore. It's just an empty paragraph. If I go in now and um, in our connect here, we will say, this dot content target. This is going to be in camel case dot text content equals intro. So this should get us back to um, to where we were. See, now that it's getting, instead of from the HTML, it's getting populated from the, um, from the stimulus. We'll, we'll um, just doing that to, to show that you can do it. Usually you, you wouldn't necessarily need to define your initial value there. You define it in your view or send it over as your view. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is um, the, um, we need to, for right now, I don't think we need to do anything else other than get the so we're going to hard code this um, to begin with um, to make the, the button work here. So the um, the get next button, we're going to now want to, oh, the other, the other thing I'm going to do is make this uh, disabled come from the, um, come from the controller rather than um, having it be in the HTML attribute. So I'll also do that. In order to do that, I need to make that the reset button. So we'll replace disabled here. Data, hello, target equals reset button. And then when we connect here, we're going to Reset button target dot disabled equals true. And so we'll make sure both of our items are saved. We should now still have the reset button disabled. And we do. The other thing that we're going to do. Um, so now we're going to add an action to this get next quote button here. And this is a little different. So rather than uh, having the controller as part of the action, it's just data action equals. And then you have the name of the event. So in this case, click and it should have um, the name of your controller. So in our case, hello, and then a pound sign, and then the, um, the name of the method you're going to call on that action. So uh, we're going to 
right now have that, um, we'll define that next quote action on our hello controller. And then we will um, going to I'm just gonna for right now hard code this we'll come back to it in a second but we'll see if we can at least get what we've got so far for our tests to pass so what we should see now is the uh, and then the Reset bar button disabled should now be false. So we'll see if this works. We'll, we'll run in the, the test first. All right. Oh, but we have not changed. There are five quotes for raining. So it made, made it to that point. Uh, so we need to add to our initial um, um, portion here the um, to the six quotes remaining and this will be remaining again for just this first pass through, we're going to make it hard coded. There are five quotes remaining. See where that gets us in terms of our I don't think I saved it. Text content. I just turned it into a string rather than a DOM element. There we go. We've got our simple hard-coded text content uh, section passing here. Uh, we will also make an assertion about the um, the button. still passing we are now so you can see that this is kind of um, we still let's see here data hello target we still need a, a target for our next button reset button has to take an action here create a reset method we are going to move what we had in the connect section here to the reset section and then on connect we're going to call this dot reset so now when I do this we should have essentially a toggle situation so the 
get next quote adds there's nothing no other action when we do this it changes it to that hard-coded value but when we hit click reset the uh, reset button should become disabled again and it should go back to our initial state but it is not defining the number of quotes we have remaining so let's fix that Fresh again. Now we should have this toggling. Uh, so the right now this is just hard code. Let me populate our um, our quotes. Um, we'll, we'll create six quotes here and have this next quote um, get the um, the quote next quote from the array here. So we'll go in and I'll pause and add my quotes in. And what I'm gonna do here now is it in the reset action here, we're going to do a uh, this dot current quotes, uh, rather than th this will allow us to get the, um, to uh, modify a local copy of these quotes uh, and while not um, harming the original so that when we hit reset, we'll be able to do um, an array from, uh, we'll, we'll get a fresh copy of the array rather than like if we were to, un, uh, to shift the first quote off of here, it would wind up um, changing this array's content. So the next time we did try to reset, it would be gone. So we'll do that. It'll be an array from quotes. And then our, we're getting a little Remaining, some of this stuff is going to be kind of repeated. So we're going to refactor out right now a process content method, and this will I'll uh, just pause and. Uh, paste it in and then we'll talk through it. So what we've got is this, um, the remaining target um, text content will now become, there are a um, number of quotes left remaining, quotes remaining, and then the, um, the next button and the reset button will be determined based on whether the, the current, current quotes length that we've got is equal to the const quotes here length that we have. So if they're equal, then that means that we're in a reset state. And so the reset button should be disabled. And then the next button will become disabled when the current quotes length is equal to zero. And then it's just setting those, uh, those values equal to the, um, those uh, constants, which, probably really don't need I'm not using that anywhere else so I can just do this here and here it makes it a little bit more concise and we'll see where that gets us So we'll refresh. So, okay, we're getting our um, 
quotes here. When we hit reset, it goes back to six. Button gets disabled. Let's see what happens as we continue down. This is looking promising. There is a slight bug here. So where it gets down to one, um, you can see there are one quotes remaining. That is not proper English. And then when we get to zero, this should become disabled. And it's not. Let me check out our code here equals there. Now it should become disabled. There we go. So the zero quotes remaining, this becomes disabled. And then we get reset into the state. So this is other than our number of quotes remaining, this is working. Let me um, I'm going to go back to our test and add some uh, some more interactivity here. So I'll pause and add some more um, clicks and stuff like that. All right. So before I really get into this, I'm going to I refactored out some of the the common uh, assertions that we'll see. So for the reset state, we had up here uh, all these lines here that we're testing for. I moved this here so that we can um, repeat these assertions without just copying and pasting the code over and over again. And then we've got the um, end left assertions. So the number will be um, what we've got there. And it's after you click. So the, um, the index will be um, kind of five minus that number that we have left. Um, and then it will uh, assert that we've got the quote there. I just copied the, uh, the quotes that we have to match what we've got in our JavaScript controller. The, um, and then it's going to assert that the correct quote is there. Uh, the number will be, um, will make it dependent. So, um, if there's uh, any number other than zero or one left, um, it'll just be this base text, um, which I need to assert here. So there was zero, it has this base text, and then it adds in click reset to try again. And then when we um, have one left, I'll say, instead of there are a number of quotes, there will be there is one quote remaining. And then um, if any time else, it'll just be that uh, base text. Um, we're asserting that the, um, the stimulus te text isn't there. Uh, and then we're asserting that the reset button is there and that it's not disabled. And then the get next quote button, the disabled value will only be true if the number is equal to zero. So let's see if we've got uh, parity before we start adding new assertions. I've got a syntax error. All right. 
So if we failed there. How many times have we clicked the button? So we indicates that extra one that we've that it'll be right once we there we go okay so now we can do this we'll go four three we will click on reset Verify our reset state assertions and then five, four, three. Set state assertions one more time. See how this goes. There are portions of this that we haven't written yet, so it will fail uh, there, but we'll um, see if otherwise it's working. test line 30 oh. gotta have an underscore so I expect that it will get down to one and then fail because we don't have the agreement there one quotes remaining. So let's fix that. So we'll go into our stimulus controller now and process content. Set remaining text. So we'll pause and write this in. So I'm setting the remaining text here. There are a bunch of parts to this. So the, uh, the quote length, um, I guess we don't really, yeah, we're using it twice, um, three times. So the, uh, the pluralized will be, it's equal to one, it's quote, otherwise it's quotes. To be um, here, the um, quotes pluralized, um, equals one, it's is, otherwise it's are. And then if there are zero left, we will have the clicked reset to try again uh, message here. So let's take a look at our stimulus controller in action. Oh, we are not changing our number here. What did I break? I'm 
not sure what I've broken here. Let me reset and so yeah, it's staying with six. Reset button is not working correctly. And then where it doesn't reset there. So next quote is doing that process content remaining sets remaining disabled sets disabled hmm. let me Not even going to make it to the next. Yeah, it's not starting out as disabled. Let me get back to when things were working here. Just copy that out for a minute. I have a console error. I might have a console error. Assignment to constant variable. That's my problem. And it's happening in. Thirty nine. Oh, I've just got too many equal statements there. Sorry, assignment statements to be more precise. Okay. one there is one quote remaining and then this is now disabled again our reset uh, instruction is there click reset and it all appears to be working let's see how our system test does now. We are golden. Let's run all of our tests. It's working. That is excellent. Let me take a look at our um, changes here. So the gem file lock we just updated our uh, at the beginning of this video. The uh, the bundle to deal with the append dependabot alert. We've got our um, changes to our JavaScript controller, the Hello controller from the Hello World version that was there. And then we've got our additions into the um, the welcome index. Uh, let's make one more change and get this similar to the other one. Well, since we're um, we're setting that dynamically anyway, that should still all pass. And it does. 
was a little bit of repetition and hard coding alleviated. Um, and then data actions, data targets. There's a lot you can do with, uh, with stimulus. I, I recommend uh, taking a look again at the, um, the stimulus uh, site here. There's a handbook that lets you kind of go through like similar to what we did, but with a different use case, hello stimulus, and kind of talks through all those things like targets and uh, actions and um, the um, kind of takes you further into depth. Maybe I'll um, do a more extended version of this, but the uh, there's obviously a lot you can do uh, interactivity wise here uh, aside from just cl click events you can have um, you can set data attributes that are DOM IDs of other parts of your um, of your page and um, take reactions off of uh, changes to those um, and you can again do all kinds of things you can um, set up a listener to an action cable channel you can perform something to an action cable channel you can um, modify your your visuals uh, your essentially anything you can do with uh, with JavaScript and it winds up being uh, kind of scoped to that parent Dom element uh, fairly kind of small and componentized so um, it's a I think a good default for most web apps in Rails and um, check it out. Uh, I would recommend trying a, uh, trying it on your next application. Um, similar to what we did here in this getting started guide, you can get pretty far with uh, without yarn and just kind of using the import maps and the uh, kind of the, the defaults that Rails ships with and then trying to incorporate them into the uh, the Rails way so you can kind of have um, those it builds incrementally. You've got your um, your views. You can add in uh, turbo streams, turbo frames, those sorts of things. If you need a little bit more interactivity than that, you can uh, then graduate to doing things with stimulus. You can import things uh, from other libraries into this if you wanted to. Um, so like, let's say you're submitting a form and uh, in order to do that properly, you need to import the form polyfill so that Safari works when you try to submit your form, you can add that right into your controller and it will um, import for you. So this will conclude the development portion of our um, section here. We'll add and commit our code write our message. I got my commit message. I will push it to the remote. See if that resolves our alert. It does. And we will see you in the retrospective. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem, use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.